Now, two things. One, I was tempted to put my hat on because as y'all can see, I need a motherfucking haircut. My hair grows long. It grows real quick, particularly on the, the sides and back. The sides and back of my hair probably grow two, maybe even three times quicker than the top of my hair. Yeah, the, the sides and back of my hair grow quick. Like, like I could get my hair cut like every once, every week and a half to two weeks, and my shit would just be like a mini afro in like a few days. Um, but I decided not to put my hat. You notice I ain't been wearing hats as much in 2018 as I did in 2017. Now, it's interesting. I had this one person in my comment section. I think his name was Tyrone. He gave credit to another dating coach. <laughs> Alpha Male Strategies. Because he said Alpha Male. Now, true enough, Alpha Male Strategies did rip on me a couple times about wearing hats all the time in my video. But that's not the, the reason I stopped wearing hats. But he said, yeah, you need to you need to thank Alpha Male Strategies, man, because he clowned you about wearing hats in all your damn videos. And I noticed ever since he clowned you, you stopped wearing them. Now, that ain't that ain't the reason, or at least that's not the sole reason. That might have been like maybe a small contributing reason, but no. No, I just uh, decided not to wear hats anymore. Um, but yeah, if you notice, in 2017... I think I only did like two or three videos without a hat, which was my early videos. Like my first two or three videos, I didn't have a hat on. And yeah, I said most, maybe four. There was only four videos I did in 2017 where I didn't have a hat on. Whereas in 2018, yeah, I, I've had probably no less than three-fourths of my videos have been without a hat. Now, other thing real quick. This drink, you notice I always hold up Zevia for my thumbnails. And I had a young lady come in my in the comment section, one of my videos. Bless her heart. She started off giving me a compliment. She called me handsome. She said, hey, handsome. You know, that always captures my attention. <laughs> she said, hey, handsome. But then she, after she said, hey, handsome, giving me that nice compliment, she went on to criticize. She said, you need to stop drinking all that carbonated drinks. Carbonated drinks are unhealthy for you. Ah, that's not true. That's not true. Um, uh, I did my research on carbonation. Matter of fact, before I started drinking Zevia, because you know, to give you the quick story of Zevia, before I started drinking Zevia, I actually went over, I want to say over 10 years without drinking carbonated drinks. Yeah, between roughly 2005 and mid-December of last year, 2017, I didn't drink any carbonated drinks. I didn't drink nothing but plain water, uh, in some cases sweetened water, uh, and juices and teas, juices and teas. Sometimes sweetened, sometimes unsweetened. But I didn't drink anything carbonated until that week in between Christmas and New Year's of last year, I went to Las Vegas to work with some one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face coaching session clients. And while I was out there, I was visiting a good friend of mine from Los Angeles named DeMario. And DeMario, he and his wife, they... Uh, introduced me to Zevia because I I had told him number one I'm type 2 diabetes which is reversible and I said really the only uh, sweetener I use is a sweetener called Stevia Stevia extract which is, most people consider the best sweetener you can use like the one of the worst is aspartame I don't fuck with anything with aspartame in it. if it got aspartame in it like NutraSweet has aspartame most regular soda pops that are diet soda pops have aspartame in it. I don't fuck with aspartame. Shit gave me headaches like crazy. Um, but yeah, this is sweetened with stevia extract. So before I start drinking this though on a regular basis, I did my research and come to find 
I used to think carbonated drinks were unhealthy for you, but they're not. There's only three things that make carbonated drinks unhealthy. is if they got sugar in them, if they got dangerous or uh, unhealthy artificial sweeteners, such again as aspartame, or if they have artificial coloring and or artificial preservatives. Artificial coloring and or artificial preservatives. Like this, Zevia has no artificial coloring. It's, it's clear. Like despite the different flavors, all like, like if you drink, like for example, if you buy a regular orange soda pop at the grocery store, you notice how they'll put a coloring in it to make it look orange. That's considered an artificial coloring. Whereas when you buy orange Zevia, it's clear. It's clear. Same with root beer. Same with grape. It's clear. It's not like grape is not blue. It's clear. That's because they don't put artificial coloring in it. So anyway, to that young lady who said that to me, I appreciate you trying to look out for my health. That's sweet of you to do that. But there's nothing wrong with carbonated water by itself. Carbonated water is just as healthy as regular water. It's just as healthy as regular water. Again, as long as there's not sugar attached to it, unhealthy, artificial sweeteners attached to it, or artificial coloring and or artificial preservatives attached to it, there's nothing wrong with carbonated water. Excuse me. Now, I wasn't planning on doing <clears throat> another free video for the general YouTube public this quick. If you notice, I haven't been doing too many. I've been averaging at most maybe once, one free video a week. And I did my last one last Thursday. So it hasn't even been a full week yet. Um, and before my Patreon subscribers get antsy and be like, hey, what about our videos? I'm going to do at least two within the next week. I'm going to do a, a $5 Patreon exclusive either tomorrow or Thursday. Tomorrow or Thursday. And then I'm going to be going out of town on Friday. I'm going to the Washington, D.C. area. And 90% chance I'm going to do another Patreon exclusive video while I'm out of town. Actually, I have, uh, it's not guaranteed yet, but I got two women who are fans of my adults only podcast program called the erotic conversationalists, the erotic conversationalists. I got two female fans that live in the DC area. And, um, I think one lives in silver Springs and Maryland and well, I shouldn't be telling their cities, but, um, yeah, I got two women and they've kind of partially agreed to let me interview them on camera about what they love so much, but it ain't definite. I honestly, my gut feeling is that they're gonna flake out because they don't want they don't want their faces because they wanted to do an audio only, and I don't want to do an audio only interview with them. So for me, it's either video or nothing. So they said they're gonna marinate over it, think about it, and if they go for it, they're gonna let me put them on video. And if that's the case, I'm gonna upload a Patreon exclusive video interviewing them why they love my show the erotic conversation so much that's the show that makes a lot of women play with their pussy while they're listening to it if you didn't know that a lot of women and I'm not trying to just toot my own horn but it's the truth I can't tell you how many email messages I have from women who told me they played with their pussies listening to one or more of the episodes of the erotic conversationalist I mean it's it's pretty much at least one fourth to one third of my interviews is pretty much just phone sex keeping shit real about two thirds three fourths of it is just a candid interview about women's sensuality stuff to do with women's female sexuality issues and i'd say at least a fourth of it with my most of my guests with the exception of two or three we just basically transition into having just flat out hot kinky phone sex um so yeah i, I have a lot of female fans all over the country and even some internationally that love that show, The Erotic Conversations. Okay, here's why I want to do this video. And as I always give my disingenuous disclaimer, it shouldn't be too long. But then again, hey, you know, I got to give myself credit. I think I already did this, but I'm going to give myself credit again. Compared to 
2017. I've been very good at keeping my the vast majority of my videos under an hour. Like if you look at my videos from 2017, I would say probably like 70 to 80% of them were an hour or longer. An hour or longer. And I had at least three videos that were two hours or longer in 2017. In 2018, I only have about eight to 10 videos that are an hour or longer. I'd say at the most roughly about 10 videos that are an hour or longer. All the rest of my videos have been under an hour. Like the, the very last video I did that was under, I mean, that was over an hour, that was an hour or longer was roughly two months ago. It was the video called, uh, it was on, I want to say July 7th. It was about my YouTube, I call him my YouTube arch rival, the Grim Reaper, who actually, <laughs> interesting enough, he, you know, he did a show in late June called Alan Roger Curry, The Final Chapter. The Final Chapter, meaning... He essentially said in that video that he wasn't going to talk about me no more. He said he actually went as far as saying he was tired of talking about me. So in late June, he said he wasn't going to talk about me no more. He did a video call. It was a live stream. He called it Alan Roger Curry, The Final Chapter. And then like two or three weeks later, he was talking about me again. He was talking about me again. And now he just this past what, Friday? Last Thursday, last Friday, he did a video where my name was in the title. It was, he, he did a video basically criticizing me for my article about black incels. I had an article called The Rise of Black Male Incels and Angry, Bitter Misogynists. And he had a conniption fit over that. One of his panelists on his live stream said, that with that article, I threw all black men under the bus. Now, you know I was dog-sitting last week. I was dog-sitting my brother's dog named Chewy. So, I, instead of saying, insert dog face here, I'm going to just say, insert Chewy's facial expression here. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. I I I I, I, I kind of miss Chewy, man. Kind of miss Chewy, man. He was he was fun. He was fun, man. I I haven't had a dog, man, since I was probably in my twenties. Yeah, that was the last time I had a, a dog on a regular basis. Was uh, when I was in my twenties. Um, yeah, starting with my thirties up until now, I've never had a dog. Um, the closest I've, I've, I've had to having a dog is actually the times when I do dog sit my brother's dog. Um, but yeah, this was my longest dog sitting period. I dog sit, I dog sat him for like six days. Um, but anyway, uh, Here's the thing, right? that ain't what this video is about, so this is not a response to the Grim Reapers video, but here's my thing. I already did a video response about that article. It was called Only Hit Dogs Holler. Only Hit Dogs Holler, man. Here's my simple thing. If you're a black man and you do not consider yourself an incel, an incel type, and or you do not consider yourself an angry, bitter misogynist, then why the fuck you been on the shape over that, that fucking article? Why? 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 You think if somebody wrote an article called The Rise in Black Male Homosexuals that I'm going to get bent on the shape that, over that article? Fuck no. Because I'm not a black male homosexual. I love pussy. Ain't nothing about dick turns me on. Okay? If they did an article called the rise in black male heroin users or, or crack cocaine users. You think I'm going to get bent out of shape? Fuck no, I don't use illegal drugs. You think if somebody wrote an article called uh, The Rise in Black Male Pedophiles or The Rise in Black Male Rapists that I'm going to get bent out of shape? Fuck no. 
Because I ain't a pedophile and I'm not a rapist. And I could go on and on and on and on and on. Why are you getting bent out of shape over an article if, if the, art, the contents of the article doesn't apply to you? That's what I want to understand. Make me understand that like I'm a fifth grader. Make me understand that like I'm a fifth grader. So yeah, I heard uh, he made it public for a while. I think he took it down now. But I listened to, I didn't listen to the whole live stream. I listened to about maybe a half hour to hour of it. Yeah, and he was ripping apart my article and most of his panelists were ripping it apart. But again, my thing is, if you're not, if you don't consider yourself an incel and you don't consider yourself a bitter misogynist, why the fuck you been out of shape then? Why the fuck you been out of shape? Man, fuck all you motherfuckers, man, who criticized that article. And I'm saying that's serious, man. Fuck all you motherfuckers, man. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Only hit dogs holler. Only hit dogs holler. Any article that come out, man, there's been a lot of articles that have come out that to one degree or another have criticized black men as a group. Or more so specific black men with specific characteristics. If those characteristics don't apply to me and my behavior, my lifestyle, I don't give a fuck. That's the difference between me and a lot of you hit dog types. I don't give a fuck, man. Like some of you guys, man, when black women get on YouTube and say all black men do this and all black men do this, y'all get all bent on the shape. Man, I don't give a fuck what these sisters say about black men. If the shit don't apply to me, fuck them. You get that? Fuck them. I don't give a shit what any, if somebody don't mention my name and they don't highlight a, a behavioral characteristic that I know for a fact does not apply to me, I don't give a fuck what they say. I don't give two flying fucks. Believe that shit. But again, that ain't even what this video is about. That was actually a little animated, semi-passionate segue. Or digression, I should say. Digression. Excuse me. Okay. Now, here's what the video is actually about. Now, you know, my last video I did, at least the first half of the video, was about Mo1 versus Tricky. Mo1 versus Tricky. Now, there's some videos I do, I kind of anticipate a high degree of both public feedback and private feedback. Some videos I do, I, I know I'm I'm gonna get receive a lot of public feedback and or private feedback. Excuse me. That's Bert, I think number three. Now I can honestly say for that video, Mo One versus Tricking, I didn't expect to get as much feedback as I did, both publicly and privately. I I honestly, sincerely, I did not expect to. But I've gotten a boatload of feedback. Both. If you go to the comments section, I have over 200 comments and reply comments. Speaking of the Grim Reaper, <laughs> he came into my comment section on that video. That was his first time being in my comment section since, since like late May, early June of last year before he and I fell out. Yeah, we fell out the first week of June of last year after being cool for a few months. But yeah, that was his first time in my comment section. Yeah, he posted, Grim Reaper, he posted in my comment section about the video about Mo1 versus Tricking. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I got a lot of public feedback and I got almost just as much private feedback. So I'm, I'm going to clarify some things. I'm going to use the rest of this video to clarify. Oh, and then the second thing kind of sort of related to it, I got sent links to two videos that were similar, somewhat similar to my video content. One was a video that O'Shea Duke Jackson, you know I'm cool with, he's the editor-in-chief of the Negro Manosphere. He did a video asking the question, is it simping if you go to like say Rio de Janeiro or the Dominican Republic and engage in tricking? Is that simping? Basically, you could say Another way of putting it, he asked the question, is tricking and simping essentially the same thing? Is tricking and simping essentially the same thing? And then a guy who I've, I've watched quite a few of his videos, a young brother who's very intelligent and articulate, and he has one of the most entertaining uh, intros and 
and ec what, what do you call it? The opposite of intro, extro, exit, exit, you know, whatever you call it, exitro. I have like, you know, mine at the end. His is very entertaining. He goes by the name Rusty Balls. Rusty Balls. <laughs> I'll probably include a link to his video and O'Shea Duke Jackson's video in the comment section below. And well, to answer that question, Rusty Balls did a video basically saying that he doesn't believe those two. He believes those two are two different things, tricking and simping. And I would say I agree. I actually would co-sign with Rusty Balls. Those two are, are two different things. Tricking and simping are two different things. And that's going to be what I'm going to talk about for the remainder of this video. And hopefully, again, I won't go over an hour, but I might. But um, so here's the deal. I want to talk about sex. Now, there's some interactions between men and women in relation to them having sex with each other that doesn't involve money at all. I've had sex with a number of women in my life where I didn't spend any money on them. They didn't spend any money on me. We just fucked. We met, we talked, we fucked. We met, we talked, we fucked. So there's a number of interactions that a man and a woman can have that won't involve money at all. Or if it does involve money, it might only involve, like, say, a small amount of money. Like, I don't know, five, ten, fifteen dollars. Nothing significant. Um, but then there's other interactions between men and women where one or two things are going to happen. Either the woman is going to spend significantly more money on the man involved in the sexual relationship or the uh, man is going to spend significantly uh, more money on the woman than the woman involved in the sexual relationship. And I just want to quickly highlight those six categories. They're split up into three each. Three each. Three categories where men, women basically pay them for the dick, pay them for the dick, and three other categories where the man is basically paying women for the pussy. Women pay men for the dick, and men um, pay women for the pussy. The three categories of men who get paid or compensated for their financial, I mean, who get financially compensated for their sexual companionship would be a pimp, a kept man, and a gigolo. A pimp, a kept man, and a gigolo. And then... The three men who typically spend money on women in exchange for their sexual companionship are the sugar daddy, the trick, and the simp. The sugar daddy, the trick, and the simp. Now, I'll say out of those six terms, I don't really use the term simp in my books. I've used it in my articles some of my freelance articles, but if you read my books or listen to my audiobooks, I don't, use, I don't really use the term simp. Number one, that's more of a, specifically a black term. I don't know too many Caucasian guys and Asian and Hispanic guys that, well, I guess they're using it more and more now because the uh, manosphere is so diverse, but yeah, that started out. The first guy I heard use the term simp was Tariq Nasheed. Tariq Nasheed was probably the first person I, I heard use the term simp. I don't know if he was the one who originated it. I'm not saying that, but he was the first person I heard use that term on a regular basis. But so I'm going to start with the three guys who get compensated for their financial companionship and then move on to the men who compensate women for their sexual companionship. Number one, pimp. A pimp, I think most people know what a pimp Some people use, there's two ways that the term pimp is used. Some people use it formally, some people use it informally. Formally, a pimp, or otherwise known as also a street pimp, is a man who has a stable of whores that fuck men for money 
and then they give a percentage of their earnings to their pimp. Simple as that. It's like you could say he's the employer, his hoes are the saleswomen, and when they get a sale, they got to give a cut to the house. A pimp, his whole lifestyle is financed by his whores. Like, he doesn't pay for his own cars. His whores pay for his car. He doesn't pay for his own clothes. His whores pay for his clothes. He doesn't pay for his own house or condominium or apartment. His whores pay for his residential space. So that's the thing with a pimp. Now, as far as have I been in that category and that, I've never officially been a pimp. Although I've had some male friends who have suggested that I could have been or should have been. And I've had some women that I used to deal with that have suggested that I could have been or should have been. The closest I've come to being a pimp, and if you read my book, Who Said Again, or listen to the audiobook, is what I refer to as a wing. A wing, which is short for wingman, even though they're not necessarily synonymous with each other. But I've been a wing for guys. What is a wing? Just like in the business world, how you have, in the private sector, you have, of course, private businesses for profit that earn a profit. And then you have some public, in the public sector, you have some like government agencies that are considered not for profit entities, not for profit entities. You could almost lightheartedly think of being a wing as a not for profit pimp, a not for profit pimp. I've been a wing for quite a few guys. And again, if you listen to some of my blog talk radio episodes, or you, at minimum, you listen to my Who Said Again audiobook, more specifically, Verbal Seduction Story Number Six. You know that I've been a wing for a number of my male friends in my life. What do I mean a wing? Let's say this. Let's say, like, when I lived in Los Angeles, I might have had a male friend who might have traveled to Los Angeles on business from New York or Chicago. And while he's in town in Los Angeles, he might say, hey, Alan, man, you know, I'm in town for like three days, man. You know, any nice clubs you can take me to or even more specifically, any any nice sexy honeys, man, you can introduce me to, man, so I can have fun with while I'm in town. What I would do is if I had, say, let's say I had four fuck buddies in my rotation at the time, I would call up one of my fuck buddies. I would say, yo, baby girl, I got a buddy named Charles in town from New York from Thursday to Sunday. Why don't you go to his hotel? He's at this hotel. Go to this hotel. Hook him up as a favor to daddy. Hook him up. Suck his dick. You know, hook him up. And uh, uh, daddy would be much appreciative. And she would be like, yeah, daddy, I'll do that. I'll do that for you. And uh, now the thing is, why that wouldn't be technically considered pimping, I wouldn't charge no money to my friend. I wouldn't charge my, my male friend any money. Other than maybe some basic expenses, you know. I might have her him pay, give her money for gas or something like that, you know. Something. So I, I didn't truly, I was never truly a pimp. But yeah, I've, I've winged out some women like a motherfucker <laughs> in my years. And again, I mentioned that in Who Said Again and specifically in Verbal Seduction Story. Like, if, to give you a quick recap of Verbal Seduction Story number six, I did something that, if I say so myself, was worth tooting my horn for. There was, I had one incident when I lived in L.A. that I described in Verbal Seduction Story number six where I hooked up a buddy of mine with a threesome with two women who didn't know each other. And for those of you who've never had a threesome, that's pretty challenging to do. Because most men who have threesomes with women, unless the two women are hookers. Now, when, if you're talking about like call girls or hookers, that's different. That that could happen quite frequently. But I'm talking about just regular women. It's rare when a guy has a threesome with two women who don't know each other. Usually, if a guy has a threesome with two regular women, non, a woman that's not a prostitute, call girl, or escort, it's usually going to be two women who are girlfriends with each other. They know each other. They're friends with each other, co-workers, roommates, whatever. 
I hooked up a buddy with a threesome, number one, with two women who didn't know each other, and even more so, they initially didn't like each other. They didn't even like each other. And I described that in detail in Verbal Seduction Story number six. What it was, I had a buddy, he was a handsome guy, you know, a former college athlete, biracial. I would almost compare him to maybe like a Alex Rodriguez type looking dude. Um, you know, Alex Rodriguez used to play for the Yankees. If I had to compare him to somebody physically, he probably looked like Alex Rodriguez. And um, it was his birthday weekend. And I wanted to hook him up. So yeah, I had this snow bunny, i.e. Caucasian woman, and a sister, a.k.a. black woman, that I targeted to have as a threesome. Now, the white woman didn't so much have a problem with the sister as much as the sister had a problem with the white woman. Now, I know brother's going to be like, see, I told you, sisters always got to have attitude. They always got to have attitude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the sister had more issues with with the snow bunny than, than the Caucasian woman did with the sister. But I use my verbal seduction skills and just being the smooth motherfucker that I am and my mode one talents to work things out. So without getting a long story, yeah, man, he ended up having a threesome with two women that didn't know each other. And I, and I hooked up with this other chick. So yeah, if y'all want to know more details about that story, uh, check out Who Said Again and specifically Verbal Seduction Story number six. Um, so anyway, but yeah, I've been a wing for a number of guys, particularly in my 20s and 30s, but I've never been a pimp. So I can't speak about pimp from actual my own experiences. But yeah, everybody knows what a pimp is again. So that's the number one guy. Not only does he get paid for his sexual companionship, he has his whole lifestyle. His whole lifestyle is financed by the efforts of his whores. Moving on. Kept man. Kept man. Right underneath the pimp would be a kept man. Now, most of you know, or if you didn't know, I'm about to tell you, I've been a kept man for at least two women in my life. I've been a kept man for at least two women in my life. What is a kept man? A kept man is basically the male equivalent to a woman being a sugar baby. In the same way you have women who are sugar babies in their arrangement with a sugar daddy, and I'm gonna be talking about sugar daddies in a little bit, the male equivalent of a sugar baby would, would be a kept man. A kept man is a guy who has a sugar mama. I've had at least minimum two, and I've probably had three technically. Yeah, I've had at least two sugar mamas in my life. Like one I've talked about before a few times. Yeah, when I lived in Los Angeles, I had a woman who was a very high status surgeon in Los Angeles County. She lived in Beverly Hills and she she was my sugar mama and I was her kept man. Now some people might say, okay, Alan, I'm ignorant to that term. What does that mean? Kept man. I mean, what does that entail? I already described it. It's basically the male equivalent to sugar babe. But essentially, when you're a woman's kept man, a woman is going to agree to pay some of your bills, treat you to a lot of free meals, free movies, free concerts, whatever, free social events, in exchange for you not just giving her some dick on a regular or semi regular basis. But the catch for you as the man is you got to operate on her time schedule. <laughs> That's the one catch with being a kept man. You got to operate on a woman's time. In other words, let's say you got this woman and you would prefer to fuck her on Fridays and Saturday nights. But she wants you to fuck her on Mondays and Wednesday nights. And say, under normal circumstances, other shit you would want to be doing on a Monday or Wednesday night. If you're a woman's kept man, you got to operate on her schedule. If she calls you on, on Tuesday night and says, you know, I want some dick and I want some dick now. If you want to continue to have your rent paid or part of your rent paid, your car note paid or part of your car note paid or free clothes, free lunches and dinners, etc., You got to agree to operate on her time schedule. 
A lot, I'm going to tell you, the t number one type of women who tend to have kept men, there's two main types of women who tend to have kept men. If the woman's single, she has a very busy, active career and lifestyle. Her lifestyle is like this. She moves like this. And she knows that she only has certain openings of free time here and there. And during those openings of free time, she wants dick when she wants it, on demand. Those type of women are going to have a kept man. Is women who are making like six figures, seven figures. They don't really, they don't really want a husband. They don't really want a, 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 a true boyfriend. They just want a motherfucker to give them dick when they want to give when they want that dick. And uh, yeah, or the other type of women is women, more scandalous type of women be a married woman. A lot of married women have a kept man on the side in addition to their husband. They'll have a kept man. Like some older women who are married, they'll have a younger dude. They'll have a younger dude as a kept man. You know, that's where the infamous pool boy scenario is. That's the old kind of adage, like the married woman with the pool boy as her kept man. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of married women will uh, have a kept man. So, yeah, again, basically, in real simple terms, though, like I said at the beginning, a kept man is essentially the male equivalent to a sugar mama, what a sugar baby is to a sugar daddy. And then the final category of women, I mean, of men who get compensated for their sexual companionship would be a gigolo. A gigolo is basically simply a male prostitute or a male equivalent to a call girl. Just plain and simple. Yeah, you're, you're the, and when you're a gigolo, you're the male equivalent to a woman being a street prostitute or a professional call girl or an erotic escort. Women will pay you directly for your sexual companions. See, there's a difference between getting paid directly and indirectly, just like a man paying a woman. See, like a kept man which is what I was, I got paid indirectly, meaning I, my sugar mama never said, I'm going to give you $80 to give me some dick. What she would do is say, if you give me some dick, I'll buy you a new suit. Or if you give me some dick, I'll pay half your car note this month. Or if you give me some dick, I'll pay, you know, two thirds of your rent this month. You know, as opposed to when you're a gigolo, a woman's going to pay you money directly for your sexual companionship. She's going to say, I'll pay you $80 to lick my pussy. Or I'll, I'll pay you $100 to fuck me for the you know two hours on a Friday night. And then once she gets her, her satisfaction from you, she's like, okay, you're dismissed. <laughs> I don't ever want to see you again. I don't ever want to hear from you again. Unless she makes you like a regular of hers. But that's a gigolo. So, you know. I've never been a gigolo. Um, yeah, I've never been a gigolo. I know at least one dating coach who has, or at least who claims to have been. Um, uh, Steve Dean Williams, who I haven't talked to in I don't know how long. But as you know, me and him used to be cool. But yeah, he's the one guy I know who's like a dating coach. Yeah, he used to be, he said when he was younger, he used to do some gigoloing. Um, the downside of being a gigolo, well, there's two downsides to being a gigolo. Number one, just like a woman being a street prostitute or a car girl, it's technically illegal. It's technically illegal. Prostitution is illegal. So technically, being a, a gigolo is illegal. Number two, ain't too many young, fine women gonna hire a gigolo. So if you're thinking that Guys who are gigolos be hooking up with women, young women who are like seven, eights, nines, and tens, you're being delusional. Most gigolos tend to service the needs of women who are either average to less than average looking, overweight, old, at least 40 years of age or older. Or if the woman is maybe young, like you say in her 30s, She's usually married, and she got a husband who travels out of town on business a lot, and she'll hire you to give her some dick while her husband's out of town on business. 
So that's probably your best chance of fucking like a real attractive woman is, is usually, if the woman's attractive, she's usually going to be married if you're a gigolo. But if a woman's single and she's attractive, no single attractive woman is going to hire no gigolo. I can tell you that right now. No single young attractive woman is going to hire no gigolo. Again, if the woman's attractive, she's either going to be over 40 or if she's under 40, she's going to be married. But otherwise, a woman's going to be either at best average looking, usually less than average looking, and overweight for the gigolo. Now, moving on to the men who spend money on women for their sexual companionship, which again is the sugar daddy, the trick, and the simp. Okay, start with the sugar daddy. A sugar daddy, and I don't think this sh should require any detailed uh, explanation. A sugar daddy is basically, just like a, I was talking about, there's two ways you can pay for somebody's sexual companionship. You can pay for it directly or indirectly. A sugar daddy pays for women's sexual companionship indirectly. In other words, he doesn't say to a woman, I'll give you $80 to suck my dick or I'll give you $150 to let me fuck you for two hours. That's what a trick would do. That's what a trick would do. A sugar daddy is going to pay for a woman's her rent payment or if she owns a house, her mortgage payment and other utility bills she may have. He might buy her a new clothes every month. He might agree to give her certain materialistic gifts. He might buy her a car, buy her jewelry. Uh, he might take her on trips to nice places. And the expectation or agreement is that, hey, if you're my sugar baby, if I spend all this money on you, I expect you to let me fuck you on a regular or semi-regular basis. Now, the catch with being a sugar daddy on the positive end, it is legal to be a woman's sugar daddy, unlike being a trick. It's legal. But a woman doesn't have to guarantee you her sexual companionship. Now, if she wants to, she could be flaky. She could say, well, I don't want to fuck you for the next six weeks. <laughs> I mean, it does happen. It does happen. I've read stories where a guy was a woman's sugar daddy, but yet he only fucked a woman, say, five to ten times in a year even though he was paying all her bills on a month-to-month -month basis. Yeah, the woman, when a woman's your sugar baby, she gets to dictate when you get the pussy and when you don't. See, whereas when you're a trick, when you're a trick, you're guaranteed to get pussy when you put out the money. You're guaranteed. That ain't true with a sugar daddy. It, you expect to get pussy when you want it, but it ain't guaranteed you're going to get it each and every time you want it. A woman has the the right to flake on you if she feels like it. So that's the one negative with being uh, a sugar daddy. The number one guys who tend to be sugar daddies are typically older guys. Guys that are 45 years of age or older and they really don't want to fuck with women in their, in their own age group anymore. They want to fuck with women who are at least 10 years younger than them, or if not younger. And so they become sugar daddies. So, yeah, you pay for sexual companionship indirectly rather than directly. Um, next one, of course, is a trick. Don't really need to cover that again. I mainly talked about that in my last video. And speaking of trick, here's the point I want to make. And the whole point of me doing my last video. I still have people trying to argue with me or debate me that tricking is more time efficient time efficient than being more one. And that's simply not true, man. I don't know how many times I'm going to say this. More one is not, does not require some significant investment of your time. I don't know where you guys getting that from. I've used more one to fuck women like within a half hour after I met them. So how do you guys thinking that more one requires like hours and hours and days and days and weeks and weeks of time? I don't know where you where you even get that from. 
<laughs> a lot of the pussy I've gotten from being more one with women is come within an hour or less after I met a woman. So, I don't know what you're talking about with this, this time thing. The only advantage that tricking has over Mo One, and I explained this in the last video, is that in certain cases, it reduces your chances of getting rejected. So that's the one benefit that you can argue that tricking has over Mo One is that it reduces, particularly if you're talking about with a street prostitute, a professional call girl, or an erotic escort, it significantly reduces your chances of, of getting rejected. But as far as specifically on the time issue, it doesn't really save you any time over more one. That's bullshit. That's bull. Anybody who believes that, that's bullshit. Now, of course, the biggest downside, why I would never enthusiastically endorse tricking, is because for the millionth time, tricking's illegal, man. Technically, tricking's illegal. People do it. Just like smoking marijuana is illegal, but people still do it. Trick is illegal. I'm never going to encourage people to just trick and they end up going to jail because of it. And then they say, hey, this dating coach, Alan Roger Curry, told me that tricking was okay. And now here I sit in this jail cell. I know people who personally who've gotten arrested because of tricking. Yeah. I, I, I've had at least two people close to me that got arrested because of tricking and then I've had some other people that were kind of like casual acquaintances that got arrested because of tricking man so that's the risk you run with tricking man if you're doing it in a city or country where it's illegal is you because there's a lot of undercover cops who, who look out for guys who are tricking um man so oh, another thing on tricking that man I think the the very first time I made a big deal out of tricking, as far as criticizing it, was somebody had done a podcast and they were singing the praises of tricking. They did one of two things. Either they were bragging on how many women they had fucked because of tricking, or they were bragging on a celebrity who had fucked a bunch of bitches because of tricking. And what my rebuttal was, I was say, I basically said, you don't have any egotistical bragging rights when you trick. Next to the whole legality issue, that's my biggest thing with tricking. If you fucking women, a woman, for example, if you fuck 10 women that are either at 8, 9, or 10 because of tricking, and you were to come to me bragging on that, I'm going to crush your ego. Because I'm going to be like, you paid for that pussy. How are you bragging? You ain't got no bragging rights if you paid for the pussy. If I fuck 10 women that are 7s, 8s, 9s, and 10s over the course of 3 months, and I fuck all my 10 7s, 8s, 9s, and 10s for free, but you fuck 10 women who were 7s, 8s, 9s, and 10s over the course of 3 months, and you had to spend, say, anywhere from $250 to $1,000 on each one of those women, how do you think you got the same bragging rights as me? Please. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have the same bragging rights as me. I mean, yeah. On the bottom line is we both ended up fucking 10 women over a course of three months. But again, in terms of that, you know, men, we love, we got egos and we love to do what's known as bragging rights. You don't have the same egotistical bragging rights if you're tricking that a motherfucker who fucked the same caliber of, of women that you did for free. So that, that, that's always been my second point next to the whole legal versus illegal thing is tricking man you don't you don't earn no bragging rights from tricking man because any motherfucker can get some pussy if they paying for it shit you could be 350 pounds with five teeth in your mouth and you and a woman gonna give you some pussy if you offering her two thousand dollars for the shit i mean get real and the final category of men who pay for sex and this is what uh rusty balls address is simps. Now, what's the, what's the difference between, and this is kind of be repeating some of the stuff Rusty Balls talked about in this video, but here's the difference between being a trick and a simp. When you're a simp, at least with a trick, you're paying money for a guaranteed pussy. If you put out the money, you're basically paying for guaranteed pussy. Guaranteed 
sexual activity. When you're sipping, what you're doing is you're spending money with the hope, the hope or confident expectation of getting some pussy or getting your dicks up. But it ain't, it ain't guaranteed. You see what I'm saying? Now, in some cases, you could be a simp and not be spending money. And again, I'm kind of rehashing some of the stuff Rusty Balls did because Rusty Balls actually pointed this out in his video and I, I totally agree with him when he said this, is that you get simp with your time. There's two main things simps invest with women. is their time and or their money. So if you're just simply spending a lot of time with a woman thinking that you're going to get some pussy from her and hoping that you're going to get some pussy from her, but say you never do, then that means you just sipped with your time. And same with money. If you're treating a woman to lunch on a week-to-week, -week, month to month basis, treating her to dinner on a week-to-week, -week, month to month basis with the hope or confident expectation that she's going to reward you with pussy, but let's say there's a chance that she never, ever agrees to, to, to have sex with you. And that means you were spending all that, 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 that time with her and all that money on her for nothing. That's what a simp does. That's, that's a true simp. Is when you're investing a significant amount of time in pursuit of a woman's sexual companionship and or you're investing a significant amount of money in pursuit of a woman's romantic or sexual companionship, even though that woman has never, ever, ever given you any clear-cut sign that she's going to agree to have sex with you. That's, that's the true definition of a simp. That's a simp. Another term, similar term, would be a chump. I talk about that. That's the term I use in my book rather than simp is I talk about chumps, guys who are chumps. That's what a chump is. Like a lot of women use that term to talk about men. They'll say, yeah, that guy, he's a chump. Or another term more technical to my unique terminology in my books is I have a term called a mold three target. A mold three target. That's what a mold three target is, if you've read my books. I, there's one guy in the category mold three that I refer to as a mold three target. A mold three target is essentially the same thing as a simp or a chump. Yeah, you're... That's when you're investing, again, a significant amount of time, at minimum just a lot of time, and at maximum both time and money in pursuit of a woman's romantic companionship or in pursuit of her strictly sexual companionship. But that woman hasn't even really given you any signs or said anything in her conversations with you that would even indicate that she even has a 10% a interest in having sex with you. That See, that, that, that means you basically just got your fingers crossed. You're just hoping that she's going to show her gratitude for all the time and money you've invested by giving you some pussy. But she ain't giving you no sign of that. That's a simp. So there you go. Again, the, the man who get paid for their sexual companionship is the pimp, the kept man and the gigolo. The men who pay women for their sexual companionship is the sugar daddy, the trick, and the simp. Keep those six categories in mind when it comes to the category of men, women, and financial negotiation for sex. Men, women, and financial negotiation for sex. Patreon subscribers, again, look for a video from me either tomorrow or Thursday. And I might have a bonus video on either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Until then, I'm out. Peace. Yes, sir. Say it again. Yes, sir. Who's the king? Alan, you're the king. Say it again. Alan, you're the king. <laughs> You're dominating me. Say it again. Alan, you're dominating me right now. Mode one. Mode one. Daddy, can I go, please? You're the king. Say it again. Oh, my king. Oh, you're the fucking king. Yes. 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 Oh. 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 You're the king, Alan. A.K.A. The king.
king of verbal seduction. You know, it's the tone of your voice. How seductive your intonations are, the vibrations that you could just reach out over the phone lines and stroke a woman's breast just by the sound of your voice. How you could make her pussy so wet just by the sound of your voice. That's actually very hot. So you said my show was what? I said your show is powerful. Oh, say it again. Your show is powerful. I bet the king would fuck me really good. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. The king. The king. The king. The king.